Okay, so it seems like there's a lot of very strong intuitions out there uh, that animals do things like they make choices and they, they obey norms or they, uh, they have agency or this kind of thing, right? So it looks like I'm going to have to very carefully um, explain exactly why I don't think so and why I think that uh, you're better off um, not anthropomorphizing animals uh, in, in the way that they've been anthropomorphized. Uh, same thing goes for computers, but I, in this video, I'm just going to stick with animals. Um, now, most of the examples of which people have given uh, involve, you know, a furry mammals, you know, cuddly type mammals, antelopes and wolves and this sort of thing, right? Um, but in point of fact, okay, almost every behavior that you can see at the macroscopic level, right, you can also see, you know, in microcosm, okay, amoeba like will hunt in a drop of water just the same way that a bear will will hunt in the woods, okay? Well, let me just show you some pictures. This amoeba is hunting for food. You see it's putting out uh, little protrusions called pseudopods, and they're like seeing it. So, ah, it got the food. So, you yeah, know, why not say that it like was hunting that food or that's, that's what it was trying to do was chose to eat, eat that. But even inside your body, this right here shows one of the white blood cells, a human white blood cell. It's chasing a bacteria there, you can see. It's like, you know, going around. You know, so like, why not say that uh, this is like hunting that guy or something? You see, the, the behaviors are very similar. They're, they're quite exactly the same thing as what you'd see on, you know, the African savanna. You know, a lion like chasing a thing. So like, why not say it's, ah, finally got it. Uh, excellent. Choice. Notice there's two bacteria there. Why not say the white blood cell is choosing to chase one of them and it chose to leave the other one behind? So um, before I like squatch this idea, I'm going to like talk about the advantages of anthropomorphizing this guy for a while. I mean, it seems like this gives us some ability to predict and control what the behavior is. I mean, we predict it's going to follow this bacteria around until it gets it, right? Also, it gives us the advantage of it. It makes us feel at home in a very bizarre world. I mean, this world of, you know, these little guys running around is like so different from our world. But yet, if we imagine a little homunculus inside of this guy, you know, some little man inside driving this uh, white blood cell around, this gives us access to a whole bunch of metaphors and intuitions. I mean, we can, you know, feel its frustration or we can like see what's going on. I mean, it, it really gives us, uh, you know, a conceptual grip on what's going on. This is why it's so natural to do this. So, like, you know, why wouldn't we want to do this anyways? Well, in point of fact, the prediction power that's here is really largely an illusion. I mean, the behavior of the uh, amoeba is, you know, if you're going to predict exactly where it's going to be five minutes from now, you really couldn't do it. There's just no way. It really depends on the random movements of, you know, how this bacteria is jostled and all this other kind of stuff. So, it, any advantages that are here are just largely illusory. If you really want to predict and control this guy, you can't use the language of agency. What do I mean by the language of agency? Well, I mean this normative language, saying things like, it should get that bacteria, it should keep your body safe from these harmful bacteria, it should protect against mutation, should, 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 all this normative language that's there. Um, just like you can't predict the exact speed of a car from looking at the speed limit, you know, if the speed limit is 55, you don't know how fast the cars are going. Saying this guy should chase the bacteria won't tell you where this guy is going to be at. If you really want to predict and control this guy, you can't treat it like an agent. You have to treat it like a stimulus response machine. Okay, so this is the white blood cell. And this thing right here is a little uh, pipette. It's a little glass turkey baster microscopic that we can squirt in the, um, you know, chemicals which this guy responds to. If you find the stimulus that this guy responds to, that will give you like tremendous powers of control over it. Okay, so so check this out, you know. Instead of, you know, these guys just randomly moving around, see, the guy who controls the pipette can control exactly where these guys are moving. He has precise control. Five minutes from now, he can predict exactly where they will be. Which bacterium will this choose? You just can't tell using the language of agency. You have to use the language of stimulus response to see which chemi chemical signal is stronger. That's the only way you can do it. So let's review. If you anthropomorphize this guy, you have no exact ability to predict and control. You only have a metaphors to go on. You cannot really exactly predict anything about this guy. But if you don't anthropomorphize this guy, if you treat it strictly as a stimulus response machine, you have the exact control over it. You can predict exactly what it's going to do. Anthropomorphization gives you a nice warm, cuddly feeling, but it leaves you completely at loss as to what this guy is really going to do next. Descriptive language, power and control and predictability. 
Normative language, the illusion of control, weakness. Descriptive language, power and mastery. Normative language, non-determinism, unpredictability. Descriptive language, you are god of your own domain. Okay, well, enough of the power trip now. I, I think you can see this is why my favorite one. When I say you shouldn't anthropomorphize, this is what I mean. You will get more power over the world if you don't anthropomorphize. <laughs> well, I hope that uh, kind of uh, gives you a little idea as to why I don't think it's appropriate to use normative language with the lower animals. Okay. Um, now, if you're thinking in your mind that, okay, you've just shown this with amoebas and you've just shown this with white blood cells, uh, please disabuse yourself of this thing. Okay. Like if you're talking about a lion trainer, if you're talking about, you know, the people who train animals for movies, doing things in movies and all this kind of stuff, you know, um, it's the same thing. It's stimulus response, guys. Okay, we're talking Pavlov's dogs drooling when the bell rings. Okay, it's, it's just as simple as that. All right, it may look like there's agency there. It may look like what's going on. I, I mean, you know, but it's it's an optical illusion, okay? It's a magic trick, right? It's, it's just inappropriate anthropomorphism anthropomorphism, uh, you know, that's happening, okay? And the way you can tell, okay, the way you can tell is you can always find some normative description, or excuse me, some descriptive description of the situation that doesn't use normative language, right? You know, the dog starts drooling because the bell rings. It's not because the dog should start drooling when the bell rings or should not do it, yada, yada, this kind of stuff, all right? Okay. So, now you might be thinking to yourself, okay, you know, well, if it's metaphorical when we apply it to these lower animals, you know, why isn't it a metaphor for when we apply it to ourselves, too? Um, you know, maybe we're just, you know, gigantic stimulus response machines, you know, maybe more complicated by orders of magnitude, uh, you know, but maybe we're just stimulus response machines, too. Well, I'd argue against that by referring you back to the parable of the kid who doesn't like the broccoli, Okay. This is another mode of control that you can use. You can impose norms on your kids, and it is not a metaphor when you do it, right? I would argue that, you know, I haven't really argued for this yet. I'm going to argue more carefully for this in, in future videos. But I would argue that when we're talking about human beings, uh, we are not speaking metaphorically when we ascribe agency to them. I mean, you know, it's almost an oxymoron. We're not anthropomorphizing when we're talking about, you know, Anthropos, right? I mean, mankind, you know. So um, that's about wraps this video up, I guess. Um, so I hope this uh, hope this helped to clarify why you know I'm saying such bizarro, uh, weird, incomprehensible things about animals and about normative descriptive language. Uh, if not, um, feel free to ask me any questions or continue to pillory me in the in the comments.